Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, I got the how to make a basic combat system in Roblox. This was the updated version of the one I made. It was end of June. Yeah, I remember end of June. So it's been like eight months. Yeah, it has been about like eight months. Is that what I want to say? So yeah, almost a year later. So I wanted to you guys with the updated version. I plan to do an updated version of the sword combat system uh, one as well and stuff uh so yeah i wanted to make an updated one because keep in mind the this video in particular like the like the original version of this video that was the first ever combat related anything i made that was the first combat video i released on the channel so obviously my skills have very much so improved and stuff so i have a much simpler system it's just 50 lines um it's just two it's just two functions on the server script very simple of course i'm going to explain everything as i always do in all my other videos and stuff but i'm assuming there's probably a lot of new people watching this since this is a general video that like attracts all the people who are interested in combat as a whole so i'm going to explain this a little more in depth just to make sure everyone understands everything but anyway let's go ahead and get straight into the video okay first things first let's go ahead and insert a remote event into replicated storage because of course we're going to need to communicate between the server and the client so we can rename the remote event to combat event right if you don't see the remote event click the plus icon if you don't see it then just type remote event to the search object menu right and then we are going to open up sound service then we have our sounds right here right so i have two different punch sound effects you don't necessarily need sound effects i mean for a punch i mean for a combat system you would but like i'm saying you don't necessarily need it just to make what i'm doing and stuff but i would recommend you just make it the way i, I made it right to get sound effects and go to the toolbox go to audio just type combat or not sorry not combat um just type punch in punch sounds punch punching combat whatever you want whatever you want to put in just type it in for sound effects or audios whatever you want right and then just drag them and then just insert them they should be inside the workspace drag them to the sound service and then boom you're good to go now we can get into the actual scripting okay so let's open up starter player let's insert a local script into starter player scripts right so we're going to rename the script to combat script and then in parentheses put local if you don't know what local is local means this is client side client is another word for the player the individual player themselves stuff right for example if let's say let's say you when you open your when you open a menu of sorts right I mean like a stats menu for example right when you open a stats menu right you were the only person who sees that like when you press m not every like it's not like you press m and every other player in the server sees the stats menu pop up on, the, on their menu and they see all your stats but you only see yours that is what we call a client side you can say a client side function or or event whatever you want to call it right that's client side right server side is the entire server in other words all of the players on top of the server it's kind of it's kind of a little difficult to understand because it's like the server is technically a combination of all the players while at the same time the server and client individual clients are different but just think of it like this client is individual player server is all the players so this is what we're doing on the client side so let's delete print hello world we're going to create a couple variables first let's get the user input service we're going to say local uis is equal to game get service user input service the user input service as you can tell by the name is used to detect um whenever a a play any type of uh, player input and stuff so i'm making a basic combat system so i decided to just make it similar to like an m1 system where you just left click with the mouse button and stuff and obviously you know left click on the mouse is a, t is a form of user input so we're going to be able to use the service to set up a function with it right so then for the second variable i'm going to create a variable for the combat remote event that we put inside of replicated storage so let's say local combat event is equal to game that replicated storage wait for child combat event then for our third variable we're going to get the local player we're going to say local player is equal to game dot players dot local player this just means we're, we're referencing the player on the on the client side right then for the last variable we are going to create create an attack number we're going to say local attack <clears throat> number is equal to one this is so we can keep track of which animation we need to use whether or not like okay so if it's one then then okay throw a left punch and then it'll change to two then okay if it's since it's two then we throw a right punch and then since it's two it'll reset back to one and it'll keep that cycle going left punch right punch left punch left punch right punch similar to my m1 system if you watch that uh video and whatnot right so let's go ahead and set up the function so we're going to say uis the input began connect function in parentheses you're going to put input comma process then enter you're going to say if input right 
that user input type is equal to enum that user input type that keyboard which means you're pressing uh any of the you know any of the buttons on your keyboard and not process which means you're not typing in chat because you obviously wouldn't be able you wouldn't want to accidentally oh sorry i'm sorry guys i don't know why i put keyboard i'm sorry ignore it what i said well what i said with the truth was that it, what i said was right but i meant to do mouse button one not keyboard but anyway so mouse button one and not processed so this is make sure that we're not clicking while the chat is open right and then we're gonna add one more thing we're gonna say and player dot character dot combat i know how to spell combat status dot value right is equal to just blank quotation marks so i have a video that's that focuses on combat statuses it's ironic because like as i'm recording this it's not out but by the time this video is out it'll already have been out but anyway i have a video that focuses on combat like how to make a combat status system stuff so you know whether or not like a water player is doing if they're blocking if they're just doing nothing if they're attacking what type of attack they're using and stuff i have a video that covers that so I, I go more in depth with it there and stuff the whole point is what you need to understand is we need to know when a player is um not is not using attack like you don't want players to be able to like you know throw a left punch but then in the middle of throwing the left punch they throw a right punch. like it shouldn't be possible in the right so you need to add a check this is to make sure that they're like they if they were attacking they already finished or they're just not attacking they or just haven't attacked yet right so then we can give the green light for them to you know begin attacking so enter you're gonna say if attack number is equal to one enter you're gonna say attack number is equal to two right simple system then we're gonna fire the remote event we're gonna say combat event fire server in quotation marks we're gonna put the name of the event i'm just gonna put m1 because it pretty much is an m1 system and comma in quotation marks for the second for uh argument one you're gonna say left punch right that it's important to you know specify which animation we need that's literally the only difference between the events really then we're, then we're gonna type the word else and then you're just going to copy and paste all of this so highlight it control c control v right you're going to change this to two and you're going to change this to one like you're essentially just swapping the numbers back right and then you're going to change this to right punch right it's that simple now we can head on over to the server side let's go ahead and insert a server script into server script service right you're going to of course need two animations to insert to create animations that okay how do i explain this okay to create the actual animation like this 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 not in that not to create an animation like i'm trying not to confuse people okay not the actual process i'm not referring to the actual process of creating animation i'm just talking about how to create an animation like this right like the like the the instance right so you would click the plus icon you would type animation right you would rename it because uh key thing these names have to match the name of the animation has to be like they have to match the name of uh the argument so you see how they match exactly they need to match so you would insert it, the animation to the script rename it make sure the names match and you would throw your animation id in here and then it'll auto fill the format for you so all you have to do is just throw in the id then you would parent those those animations to the server script and then we can go ahead and rename the server script to combat script in parentheses put server right then we can open up the combat script we can delete print hello world we can first get the sound service for our sound effects. We're going to say local SS is equal to game, get service, sound service, right? And then for our second variable, we're going to get the combat mode event. But we can save ourselves some time and just copy and paste it from the local script. So highlight it, control C, control V. Then we're going to create our first function. We need to create, we need to make it so that a combat status value is created um, each time a player respawns or like when the player first in the game and every time they respawn so that we know, okay, what is their, what, like, literally what is their combat status? And as well, we need to create, we need to uh, add in a hitbox so that a player always has a hitbox whenever they respawn so that we can detect whenever they're being attacked, right? So I'm going to say game that players that player added connect function, right? In parentheses, but be larger for player. And enter you're gonna say player dot character added connect function in parentheses you want to put character enter right then you're going to say local local combat status is equal to instance dot new in quotation marks put string value parent it to the character right then you're gonna say combat status dot name is equal to quotation marks combat status and then you're going to say comma says that value by default is equal to just quotation marks nothing and then you're going to put a space and then now we're going to get into actually creating the hitbox i have a video that also talks about hitboxes that goes more into detail so you can check that out if you're interested to know exactly how, how hitboxes work exactly but anyway i'm going to say local hitbox is equal to instance.new in quotation marks you're going to put part right 
Then you're going to parent set part to the characters humanoid root part, right? And then we're going to create a weld constraint to weld the hitbox to the player. We're going to say local weld constraint is equal to instance that new rotation marks for weld constraint. Parent this to the hitbox. You're going to say weld constraint that part zero is equal to hitbox. Then weld constraint that part one is equal to character that humanoid root part, right? Then we're going to say hitbox that name is equal to rotation marks hitbox. You're then going to say hitbox that anchored is equal to false. Hitbox that massless is equal to true, right? Hitbox that can't collide. I can get it right. Okay, there we go. Can't collide is equal to false, right? Then we're going to say hitbox that transparency is equal to one unless you're testing. Hitbox that size is equal to um vector three dot new. You can mess around with this number, but I went with five comma six comma five point five, right? And then hitbox.color is equal to color 3 dot new 1 comma 0 comma 0 so red right then lastly you're gonna set the C frame you're gonna say hitbox pivot to character dot humanoid root part dot C frame right that simple now we can get into the second function we can say combat event dot on server event connect function right in parentheses you want to put event or sorry put player the PLR short for player then comma event type comma arg one which is short for argument number one which is just generally is just what we refer to as information we pass from either the local script to the server script or the server script to the local script in this case it's the local script to the server script but yeah let me just okay i have to double check anyway let me go ahead and create a variable for my player's character i'm sorry if i sound a little tired not a lot. i'm kind of tired but anyway i'm gonna create a variable and i'm gonna say local character for our player's character of course it's attacking so player dot character then we're gonna set up the event we're going to say if event type is equal to quotation marks m1 and character dot combat status that value is equal to you know just play quotation marks which means player is you know able to be attacked then enter i mean sorry is able to attack enter you're then going to set the value you're going to say you're going to actually let's just copy and paste this save ourselves some time you just control c control v i'm all about saving time really one of the equal signs uh put the quotation marks then you're going to put uh, attacking right then you're going to set the animation track we're going to say local at is equal to character dot humanoid load animation in um per in um, parentheses you're going to say script regular bracket arg one and then at play right then you're going to you're going to play your punch sound effect right and then we're going to set up the ray casting this is the detective whether or not the player is close enough to the hitbox right if it's or generally like they're close to it and also like they're facing the right direction like i wouldn't it wouldn't really make sense for you to like be like facing the opposite direction like have your back to somebody but be able to punch them just because you're close that, like, that doesn't really make sense but anyway we're gonna so we're gonna set the start position so where we want our reader start so start position i also have a video on right casting if you want to check that out videos like everything if you couldn't already tell but anyway start position is equal to um character that humanoid root part that hitbox that position right then our direction is let's just copy and paste this here results time control c control v you can do hitbox dot c frame dot look vector right then we're going to create our recast param or parameters params for short local raycast params is equal to raycast params dot new Enter, you're going to say raycast params dot filter type is equal to enum dot raycast filter type dot exclude then raycast params dot uh filter descendants inst descendants instances is equal to special brackets character get descendants right then after that we've set up all the stuff now we can cast the ray we're going to say local ray is equal to workspace ray cast for the origin put your uh sorry not direction put your start position so start position comma then throw your direction then lastly throw your raycast params boom then you're going to set up an if statement you're going to say if ray if ray make sure of course the ray you know the ray worked and ray dot instance to confirm that okay that's actually going to annoy me anyway to confirm that it's actually uh, you know intersected make contact with an actual instance right and ray dot instance dot parent find first child humanoid so it's either an npc or a player then enter and then you're going to create a variable for the enemy character you're going to say local 
enemy character is equal to ray dot instance dot parent then you're gonna say enemy character dot humanoid dot health is less than I don't know like five or however much damage you're trying to do right then you're going to you know put your punch sound your second punch sound right and then actually there's something I actually forgot to mention that it's ironic because I actually forgot to mention this in the way guessing but anyway you're gonna do you're gonna go up here go to the direction you're gonna put times three right so this is so that you want like you want it to be in front of you but you also want it to be like a little bit of you know distance away from you like the person doesn't need to literally be like you know in kissing range and stuff because kind of crazy like have your ops like in your face you know what i'm saying so you want them to be like be within a certain amount of distance and stuff you can adjust this number to determine whether or not you want them to be this close or that close if that makes sense the bigger the number the bigger the range so pretty much if you set this to like 30 you could be you could pretty much be knocking people out from across the street that's pretty much how to explain it right so then for the last bit that we need to do we're going to go after this end and we're going to skip we're going to put space into we're going to say at the animation track that end it's one anima animation track ends connect function right close parentheses enter once the animation track ends we're going to simply just say Character that combat status that values equal to just go take regular quotation marks. This is pretty much just resetting it back to its default so that we know okay, the player is no longer attacking, they are good to attack now so that it doesn't interrupt. Because if we didn't include this, it, you could pretty much be able to interrupt the animation and stuff, it would just glitch. So, this is just to prevent any issues and stuff. So yeah, this is an updated version of my how to make a combat system. Let's go ahead and test to make sure everything works. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, um, you guys can get access to any of my scripts or models, including this one. If you purchase one of the subscriptions, link can be found in the description for either my Discord one or my uh, YouTube channel one, whichever one you know you prefer. Why not? So definitely recommend it. Got got about like I think sixty members. Yeah, sixty members now, and everyone is happy with what they got. And you must go into okay, and just remember, I'm I am an idiot. Okay, so we needed a rig to test this on. So let's click Avatar Rig Builder and throwing it throwing NPCs the NBC so we can test right um if you guys want to parse two of this watch show you guys like how to make like you know some damage effects where like they're red and all that to indicate like you know damage like even though you know they're getting damage you see their health but like you know just some visual effects via scripting then just let me know I got you I got you on a part two of the updated version okay so we have our rig right here if I try to throw a punch from this this from this is yeah I can't talk tonight anyway from this distance obviously it's not gonna work now maybe in your game you'd want it to work and if that's the case simply increase the range no biggie right but most games you would want to you know be somewhat you would want to be pretty close so now some might argue that this is extremely close but some argue but this is extremely close while my hands are actually technically touching just a little closer and there we go right so maybe maybe increase it to like four maybe maybe do four but it's up to you right so as you, as you guys can see it's very reliable if anyone's watched my other videos using ray casting with hitboxes is so much more reliable than, than touch and it's so much easier because you don't have to worry about get people getting double hit but yeah you guys hear the sound effects you see they're you see it's taking damage there you go that's you make a basic combat system congrats you just made your first com basic combat system um if you need help have any issues or anything feel free to join my discord server as like I said, if you want access to the script or model or any of my other scripts or models, you guys can become either a channel member or a Discord subscriber. Link to either one of those options can be found in the description and stuff. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. If you want a part two, let me know in the comments and stuff. Thank you for all the love and support. I'm showing all my videos. Really do appreciate it. We're on our way to 7,000 subs. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.